Hello, uh, welcome to Cooking on a Budget Live. Today we have a very special guest, Kiki from Cooking with Kiki, and she's going to show us potato gnocchi. What is that? Um, so, potato gnocchi, I'm sure loads of you know it at home, you know those packets you get at the supermarket. So it's a pasta made from potato. Right. Um, you can often do it with white potato, but just because last week at Food Print, there were loads of sweet potatoes okay. um, in the pay as you fill section, mm -hmm. I'm going to adapt the recipe today and we're going to do a sweet potato gnocchi. Yep. But we're also going to do it with a tomato sauce because I believe one of the most fundamental things in the kitchen is knowing how to make a tomato sauce. Okay. Because then if you don't feel like making this whole recipe today, you could just cook some pasta. You right. could buy the gnocchi. You could just buy some penne pasta and you could match it with this tomato sauce we've done today. However, mm. please all promise me, I advocate you at least once in your life need to try and do this recipe, all the gnocchi from scratch, because you will never want to go and buy it from the supermarket again. Okay, right then. I'm very inspired. I can't wait to see what you do. So off you go and I'll Fantastic. wait. Fantastic. <laughs> to eat it. <laughs> So I'm Angelina, also known as Kiki uh, from Cooking with Kiki, and today I'm going to be cooking for Suffice. We're doing a cooking on a budget. I'm going to be doing a sweet potato gnocchi. Um, we're going to be making it from scratch and we're going to pair it with a tomato sauce and some Stilton cheese. But don't worry if you don't like Stilton, you can always pop it in with something different cheese-wise. So. I've already roasted off my sweet potatoes, um, so we'll get talking about that in a bit. So for now, we're going to actually start doing our tomato sauce. So I've got my three shallots, so let's get chopping these up. I have my pan over behind me, which is got a little bit of oil in, so we'll get a good tomato sauce, because you always need to know, I think it's one of the most basic, basic things to know in a kitchen. Um, is a good tomato sauce. So we're going to focus on that today with our gnocchis. Let's get this pan nice and low. And then today we're going to also put a bit of courgette. So of course the sweet potatoes themselves is a good vegetable. And um, again, I had a courgette at home, so that's why I'm popping that in today. Because um, I'm always trying to up my veggies to as much as possible. Next, I'm going to get three garlic cloves. And actually now is when my eyes are starting to water, just a little bit. There's something about that smell of frying onions. It always smells great. And then a good trick, so if, obviously if you've got one at home, you can put it through the uh, garlic press. If not, always, so you can see here, I'm putting my knife flat and just pressing gently with my hands. By pressing down on the garlic, you release a lot more of the flavor. Whereas if you just chop it whole, um, you won't get as much good garlic flavor. Um, so yeah, so just give it a good old press first. And then I've already washed my courgette. So we'll just get this one next. And then I like to cut mine in half first, just because it makes it easier then. You can see I can stand it up and gently cut it this way and then lengthways. And so again, you know, if you have um, red peppers, that could go quite nicely in this dish as well. Depending on how many vegetables you like. Another one I would suggest that could be nice with your sauce um, is some spinach. And um, that could be frozen spinach or fresh and um, that you'd want to add that into the end. I'm going to get my tomato puree ready. Fantastic. And I'm going to open up my one tin of chopped tomatoes. Now with the tomato puree, you'll want to add about a tablespoon of it. To give us a really nice kind of rich sauce. Herbs. We're going to pop some thyme in today. Um, again, so I've got loads. I get loads of my herbs from Food Print in town, which is a social supermarket. So very well priced um, foods. It's stuff donated that would otherwise go to landfill, um, but absolutely perfectly in good use still. 
So I'm gonna add some time to the equation as well, but if you don't have fresh thyme, you can use um, dry thyme at home, or you could pop some oregano in there. Just a bit of herbs, even mixed herbs, um, just to give it a little bit more flavor. So we'll pop in our tomato puree. So maybe I'll put a bit more than a tablespoon. Uh, but being Mediterranean, I must admit, I do use a lot of garlic and a lot of tomatoes when I cook. And we'll pour that rich tomato sauce. Excellent. So I like to add my tomato puree, as you can see, and then just stir it around. So it kind of coats the veggies in there too. And once we've got that done, We'll add our whole tin of chopped tomatoes. That's great. And then a little trick, I always put the water in my can. And just give it a little bit of a whirl, because then it gets it nice and ready for the recycling bin. And we get all those extra little juices that were hiding on the tin. Excellent, so in a mo, we'll put some salt and pepper in this, but otherwise, that is the tomato sauce pretty much done now. Like I say, if you've got other vegetables at home, you might wanna add spinach is a great one too, we'll give it um, some more greenness in there, um, but add the spinach later on, because um, you don't want it to overcook. Right, so now we've got that, we'll pop some salt in now. So that's about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of salt. You wanna add, and then some black pepper. You wanna put about a teaspoon's worth of black pepper into your sauce. Sauce is bubbling away. You can see here, I've already put my pan of hot water on and because I've actually already roasted off my sweet potatoes earlier. Um, just to save us on some time for now. Um, all I've done with the sweet potatoes is, don't worry about peeling them because we're gonna take the skin off now, we'll show you that. Um, so I just put a really small amount of olive oil on the potatoes, put it on maximum temperature in the oven, it's about 220 to 40, and cook them for about 40 minutes. And then a good trick to know if they're done is poke it with a knife, and if the knife goes through nice, um, you know, they're cooked, as you can see here, how soft these ones are. So, because they've been roasted in the oven, you can see here, you literally, it's so easy, you just peel that skin right off. That's what we're doing here. And by roasting them as opposed to boiling them, um, it makes the potato not as moist. Um, so, if you were to boil the potatoes first, which you can do, chop, um, chop them into small chunks. Uh, it's just that sometimes you get a lot more water involved. So I kind of prefer, especially with a sweet potato recipe, I prefer uh, doing this roasting first. What I was mentioning, we can literally, this knife is just going straight through that sweet potato. So it's really nice and soft. Um, and the best thing to do is obviously mash it once, let the potatoes cool down, so give it some time once you've roasted them. And like I say, it's about 40 minutes approximately in the oven. Um, and then with a little bit of heat to it, you want to mash them. Fantastic. And of course, if you have a, um, you know, the ricer, the potato ricer, you'll get really, really smooth. So make sure you've got no lumps in it, because we don't want to be having lumpy gnocchi later. One egg to my recipe. Salt, where is teaspoons? I'm not too sure, so pop some in. So that another teaspoon of salt into your actual potato mix. Bit of pepper. And then because we've got thyme in the tomato sauce, I'm gonna also add some thyme to the gnocchi themselves, just to give it some good flavor. Um, and then depending, again, it's quite a flexible recipe in terms of how you prefer it. Um, but you can also add some garlic into the actual gnocchi itself. 
because I add quite a bit anyways to my sauce. I'm not going to do that today. So I've just done a little bit of time here. That's the situation. And we'll give it a bit of a stir. So we'll give that a nice mix with the egg. So I add the egg first just because it does get it nice and wet. And then I have actually forgotten today, I realized my cup measure. So I'm gonna guesstimate that this is an actual cup measure, um, but I'm talking about the actual measuring cups because of course at home, all our cups vary in size. So getting an actual proper measuring cup is the best thing to do, but today we're gonna eyeball it. So I've got my plain flour, which I'll be using. And for the three sweet potatoes I'm using, um, we're gonna start off by adding one cup of flour. Um, I'm probably gonna hit two cups of flour, but just start slowly, so the more, and add it little by little, so you can check that consistency. So I'm gonna start off by putting a cup we need just because I'm unsure of the actual cup size on this one. Sure. And then as we mix it up it will get a lot thicker and it will start forming a dough. So we'll see how much we get to this one. Because of course you don't want it if you put way too much flour your gnocchi is just going to end up tasting like flour which of course we want to avoid. But if you don't put enough flour into the mix, um, then when we try and boil them later, um, it's just going to disintegrate. So you can see it's almost becoming more like a pastry dough now. Fantastic. So we've added two cups of this size and apologies because this is not my normal measuring cup. And we're going to add a little bit more flour now to the mix, but we're almost there. And what we're going to do is I'm also going to actually get kneading in a minute. So we'll move our shopping board over there for now. And then flour the surface. So I'm just going to pop the flour. And what's really important, this doesn't matter whether you're wearing gloves or not, but always flour your hands when working um, with some of the doughs like this. And this is a really fun recipe to do because of course some pastas can be quite tricky to do at home. But this can be a really fun one to do with kids. Um, and of course, most people always have potatoes at home. And like I say, you can do this recipe um, with white potatoes as well. So it's getting quite sticky, and this is why I personally like to wear gloves. And then we're gonna pop this onto the flour here. So yes, we popped our flour already on there. And put some more just here on the pan. And on top, remove that. So now you can see how this is quite dough like now. It's getting there. <clears throat> so we'll give it some knead. So you just want to be nice and gentle with it. So we'll just mix it a bit more here. And with this shaping, again, you know, it's one of those practice, of course, makes perfect. Um, but you don't have to have perfect, perfect looking knockies. The taste will be so worth it. So now I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this bit here. Because I would suggest as well, because the potatoes, the water content can vary, a lot can go different with it. So I think the best thing we'll do first is we're just gonna do a little tester as well. So I've already got my pan of water boiling. Just flour this one up a bit more there. So we've rolled it up a bit, floured there. And they are going to be a bit soft and then we can cut off a little bit. That's great. And I find it really easy actually, almost like a, a teeny weeny meatball. <laughs> Roll it up, it's very lightly floured on the side there. And if you just grab a fork, you can do 
little ridges just very lightly and um, but by no means is that necessary especially if you're trying to do a bit more of a quick dinner I wouldn't worry too much about doing the forks on it so now that our water is bubbling let's pop our test on that not disintegrating so that's fantastic so let's carry on so you want to keep your size consistent so I wouldn't do them too large so I would say when I did it earlier the week in the week for the recipe I was making my gnocchis about double the size of this but of course it's got flour in there it's going to expand and um, so especially with cooking time and things like this I'd keep them smaller but what is the most important of all is whatever size you decide to go down just keep it consistent because then of course your pasta is going to cook um, at the same time so fantastic it's not disintegrating um, so yes that means we've got the recipe right so like I say just double check cook one of your gnocchis and if you find that the dough just completely goes everywhere then just start by adding another cup because um, especially if you decide to do it with the sweet or the white or you might decide to boil it the recipe will be about the same um, but that's just the best way to go about it and it's the same when you're cooking you know with salt I always under salt because you can always add more but you can't take it away so if you want to avert disasters in the kitchen do things slowly and in smaller measures so let's check in on how it's cooking oh it's still going and what will happen and we'll get some once we've got some more cooking you can have a look into that after you'll see the gnocchis will start to rise and um, so start to flow so I remember when my mum first showed me these when I was much, much younger, because my mum is a chef as well. And uh, my initial reaction to this was, it's little bites of potato in heaven. And I still maintain that to this day. That is what gnocchi is to me. So our first tester has floated up to the top, so it's now floating. And you can see here, we have a lovely, oopsie, piece of gnocchi. Um, so I'm just, using a spoon that has some uh, holes in it because of course then the water is dripping off and then I'm just going to add it to this pan on the side so now that we've got our water we can add these other ones we've been making I'm just going to wait for my water to get a little bit hotter while we keep continuing with some of these makings here and yeah like I say for me this is just one of my favorite things to do I've shown quite a few people over the years um, it's something that seems to become a tradition uh, for me on New Year's, uh, sorry, on Christmas Eve. Um, when I've been working at some research camps over the last few years, you know, potatoes is such a nice cheap ingredient. It can feed so many, you know, tomato sauce and potatoes. You really can't go wrong, especially in a um, pasta format. Um, my mum first taught me this when I was a lot younger. And in fact, this sweet potato version as well was something she had experimented with years ago. I remember she used to do it with um, red peppers as well in it, um, which was always super tasty and a great vegetarian dish as well. And I know I've put an egg in my um, version today, but you can really easily actually omit the egg um, to make it vegan as well. Um, and in fact, in recent years, I have been making it vegan. It's just once you omit the eggs, sometimes you can, of course there's the binding, um, but especially if you can have a look online, there's quite a lot of recipes there. And it's pretty much exactly the same just with the omission of the egg. So we've got our gnocchis, and of course be careful when you're adding them, because of course this is hot water now. So we can just literally plonk our little gnocchis in, and you can put quite a few at a time. I just like to drop them in different areas of the pan because um, we don't want them to all start trying to get together. Um, so, how many have I got in there? Two. So you can probably get easily at least perhaps ten in there. Um, and then, yeah, once they start floating, which should take three to five minutes, depending on your size, um, that's when they're cooked. I'm going to put one more in there. I think that's enough for now. Right, we're on the home stretch now. The last one's cool. going in. So then I'll... Um, just grate the cheese <clears throat> me. and then I'll uh, pop those gnocchis in that tomato sauce. 
We've got our last batch of gnocchi on, and then before we add it to the sauce, I'm just gonna um, grate some Stilton. Um, I absolutely adore Stilton, especially with a tomato sauce. Um, but if you're not a fan of Stilton, you can use cheddar cheese, you could use Parmesan, whatever it is you prefer. I just really like the combo of the Stilton, the um, sweet potato and tomato. as well. Great. So whilst those are bubbling away, let's start adding some of these gnocchis to our sauce. So we want to get this nice and hot again. Just get these all nice and warmed through. Would you be able to move the tray a bit to the Yes, I'll the do center. that. So we'll just get all that nice and coated. Now I'm not going to do it today um, just because of time, but what is also really nice is once you've got all your gnocchi cooked and into the sauce again, um, you could pop it on a baking tray and either pop it in the oven for half an hour or if you want it a bit quicker, um, you could just pop it under the grill, you know, just get that cheese nice and melted. So we'll just stir a bit of this through. And you see what I mean, especially if you've got some spinach in here as well, just to up some green veggies as well if you want to. You can even do a bit of salad with it. I can't wait to eat some of this, I'm not gonna lie. Excellent. And we only have one last batch to go. So it'll just get my sauce nice and creamy. So I'm literally, this stuff here, just gonna crumble it up a bit. And a bit more of this one. Yeah, so we've got, oh, we're gonna put a nice small amount to start with, make sure we've got enough for everyone. Because these are actually so much more filling than they appear. So I'm going to do a little smaller portion just for us to um, have a little testers today. And that's probably still quite large. But as you can see, I've still got quite a bit left in my pan. Um, so, you know, this can definitely do family of four, four, four. Um, I, for four quid, that is. Um, I've specifically this week used ingredients I got off food print. Um, so actually it's cost me even less than four pounds. And I splashed out on the cheese, in fact. Um, but you can see, whilst the cheese was £2.20 for that whole block, there's still so much still here. And by no means do you have to use Stilton. Um, it's just one I really like. Parmesan, uh, cheddar, whatever you've got can work. I'm also gonna just add some pea shoots. Because um, again, they, that's what they had last week at Food Print, um, which is a great social supermarket. And then, if you don't have pea shoots, um, another good one, you could add some rocket as well. I just find it just makes the plate look so much prettier. Um, and another nice bit of vegetable. So we've plated up. We'll just sprinkle just a smidge more cheese on it all because we love cheese. And just a small bit more of pepper. And there we go. I'm here with forks. It's smelling so good. I cannot wait to taste this. Well, you're in luck. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. Some sweet potato and yolk. In fact, I'm going to give you that one because it's got more Stilton. Thank you. And you've got to share that. And like I've said to everyone at home, if you don't like Stilton, you could totally adapt this recipe with some cheddar or parmesan or whatever cheese um, makes you happy. I'm not even waiting, I just want to eat it. No, go that. for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Wow, it really is sweet potato pasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. And that's it. why, you know, if you like blue cheese, mm. I really like that you get that sweetness of the sweet potato mm -hmm. and it kind of goes well with yeah. the. Kind of tanginess of all the of that, Stilson. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. But you can, you can adapt this recipe if you do want to do it with normal white potatoes as well, as we've said. Mm. Yeah, and it's so filling as well. So we've done the four plates. We did smaller portions because we're just having some nice testers today, but there was loads left in the pan. So Wait. you can do four really big portions. Yeah, this is filling. Yeah. Okay. And it keeps well. You can take it for lunch the next day. Good idea. Oh yeah. That really is cooking on a budget. Thank you. Chef Kiki. Thank you. How can people find you? Where can they go to find more about cooking with Kiki? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> so I'm on Instagram at the moment with at cooking underscore with underscore Kiki. Cool. Um, so that's probably the best place to go for the moment. And yep. I'm starting to upload recipes. And you got a little sneak peek there in the shoot today. Okay. Uh, slowly working on my recipe book. Okay. All these years I've been cooking and I haven't been keeping tabs on my recipes. Well, so no stay tuned recipe. for that. Yay. Okay. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you to the students at Confetti for helping us with this project. Thank you. thank you to Near Neighbours for helping fund this project. Okay. Right. Lunchtime.